Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Bitcoin update. A lot of people seem to know that Bitcoin is macro bullish. Perhaps there's a small percentage of people who disagree. I've done polls. Most people are bullish right now on Bitcoin. Most people think the bottom is in on Bitcoin. The 15K bottom was in fact the bottom. They don't think we're going to go below that. Perhaps, as, as I said, there's a small minority of people who disagree with that. But overall, that's the general consensus. So the big question then becomes, well, what about the medium term and short term? Where will Bitcoin go in medium term and short term? Because there's a sizable portion of the market who thinks we're going to go down for a retest of something like 21K, something like 24.5K. I understand those claims. I disagree with a lot of them. I do think that Bitcoin is macro bullish so long as it remains above 24.5K, but I actually don't think it's likely we see a retest of that. Today, I'm going to be discussing my personal predictions on Bitcoin for short and medium term and how I actually think that it's unlikely that Bitcoin goes down anywhere below something like 28K. Perhaps in a liquidity week, I discussed in this video, please watch the video. I, perhaps in a liquidity wick, we drop down, we get some liquidity from a downside, then go upwards. But overall, I think the charts are very clear right now. I think the charts are actually primed for a move, not only on medium term, but also on short term, probably to the upside. Again, overall, I say in this video, and I show you all the evidence for it, perhaps one more drop downwards to the short term levels that we've seen, 28K-ish, 28.6K. But overall, I think that we're priming and we're coming up very well, okay, for a move to the upside directionally in August. I think that August will be a great month for Bitcoin by the end of it. Okay, I think the directional move will start and we look into all of that in this video. I trust the charts. You should watch the video before you comment. Trust me. Let's get into it. Don't trust me, actually. It's a bad idea. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, basically the charts we're looking at today are the daily chart. We've also got the hourly chart, which is a lot to discuss in the hourly chart. Also a lot to discuss in the daily chart in regards to compression, in regards to 50 EMA, which is very important right now in Gaussian channel. And then we're looking at Ethereum quite briefly, and then we'll finally wrap it up by looking at the Bitcoin three-day chart and the longer term structure that Bitcoin is actually in that we're expecting a break of in August. So only four charts today. We're not going to go uh, too deep today, but we are going to be discussing it short and medium term quite a lot and giving you an idea of when the next move will be and where the next move will take us, both on short-term and medium-term basis. Before we do any of that, before we even get into the video, guys, check out the VIP, uh, check out the BitGet Exchange, sorry, five times lower fees than Binance, optional KYC, so you can sign up from anywhere in the world. Uh, very, very low fees, best fees in the game. If you're including my 15% trading fee discount by signing up using my referral link, go ahead and check out this exchange and sign up. I've used it for over a year and a half, and I actually reached out to these guys for a partnership. They did not reach out to me, which gives it a degree of authenticity. I wanted a partnership with these guys. They didn't just randomly reach out to me. So sign up, the link is in the description. Guys, let's get into the video without further ado. So we are well aware that Bitcoin is seeing very, very low volatility. We're well aware that Bitcoin's seeing low volume. We're well aware that Bitcoin's seeing, uh, you know, a lot of compression. You know, if you go ahead and take a look at the chart on the left-hand side of the screen here, you will see that long-term holders are dominating Bitcoin. Currently, the blue line has increased, which is long-term holders. Uh, the red line you, or the pinkish red line you see is sideways, which means short-term holders have not really increased or decreased, but long-term holders have gained a massive amount of dominance in the market. So people are holding Bitcoin. People aren't selling their Bitcoin. And this has been going on since around 2021, but especially since around the bear market bottom, right? People have been grabbing Bitcoin bags and holding. They're not just throwing it around like they've done previously. And this means that people have a lot of macro confidence in Bitcoin, which does indicate that a lot of people are probably following the cyclical theory, uh, because if that wasn't the case, they'd be looking at traditional markets with fear, but instead they're holding Bitcoin with confidence. And at the same time as we're seeing you know, this long-term holder dominance go upwards. We're also seeing uh, the monthly trade volume on centralized exchanges. So the volume on Bitcoin at the levels we haven't seen since like 2020, right? Very, very low levels. We haven't seen since 2020 or just before the end of 2020. So very, very low volume and very, very high confidence in Bitcoin from a holder's perspective equals the fact that, you know, people aren't really trading Bitcoin right now, which means that Bitcoin is very, very strong in a certain regard. People aren't scared right now. They're confident. They're holding, right? And the, the people who are bearing aren't really selling or at least they haven't got much to sell so it's like the the bitcoin i describe bitcoin uh pretty well as silently bullish right or incognito bullish or secretly bullish i think it actually does have a lot of strength uh secretly even though it's not reflected in the charts right now i suppose you could say it is right we've gone up massively of course but obviously in the last four months we've just kind of gone sideways but overall you know what, what have we done in the last four months guys well you got to actually think about it we haven't just gone sideways what we've actually done is we had a range here, 
with the peak at 24.5k. We came down and we bounced off of that range strongly and went upwards. Now we're seeing a short-term correction before most likely a move upwards, right? And even if we see a move downwards, where will we go? We've got support over here at 28.6. We've got support over here at 27.2. And we've got support over here at 24.5. So I don't necessarily think there's too much to worry about on a medium-term perspective. You guys are well aware of this. And I think it's a good place to start the video in regards to looking at what's actually going on in a medium to long period perspective. Well, what are we doing? Well, we're on the Bitcoin logarithmic chart here. Uh, and this chart shows you something quite clear about Bitcoin. It shows us that what we are in is kind of like an overall triangle formation. Now, it's not quite a triangle because technically the top line of a triangle isn't really co directly correlated to the bottom line of a triangle. If it was, it would be on a short-term basis like that. But overall, we've got two lines, a macro downtrending line, which is stems from the uh, the top here in April 2021, going through to a lot of wicks on multiple occasions. Uh, and we've got an uptrending line, and that, that is a support line, and that stems from the overall bottom on Bitcoin down here in January. Uh, not quite the bottom, the bottom was in November, but down here in January, it stems from, it's been retested on three occasions. So we've got these two lines, sorry about that. We've got these two lines and overall, what do they do? Well, they make a triangle, right? And when does that triangle end? When does that triangle come to a peak? When do we have to move by? Okay, because obviously if a triangle comes to an end, like over here, you're going to have to go upwards or downwards by that point, which means you're going to be seeing a breakout by that point. Uh, so there's going to be a major move by that point, a major directional decision. And that's going to be coming uh, before the end of August, probably, but the, the actual apex of the triangle happens around the start of September, but most likely in August. So right, we'll probably see a bit of Bitcoin move, and this is what I've discussed for a while now. We'll probably see a Bitcoin move in the month of August. Now, these macro uptrending lines, look at these yellow lines, they've lasted years before. So it's not like we have to break it for downside at all. In fact, it's probably more likely we break to the upside. And we've we've looked into this in multiple videos. Uh, you know, we've looked into the validity of the upside break uh, in multiple videos. I'm not really going to dive into it too much again, but I do think it is more likely Bitcoin breaks for the upside. There's many, many reasons for that. Uh, and, you know, just one of them is the, sh the sheer quantity of support we have. We have bull market support band heavily supporting that line there. We have Gaussian channel on the weekly chart supporting that line, but also on the three day, also on the five day. Gaussian channel on the weekly is flipped green for the first time in four years. You know, we've got 50 SMA and 200 SMA on the three day chart seeing a golden cross. Every single support zone that you can think of on Bitcoin from a moving average perspective is right at this yellow line, basically. So the sheer quantity of support is one of the most important reasons to believe that this line will hold. Uh, you know, and I think it will hold. I think we'll break to the upside, but even if it doesn't, I don't think we're in immediate danger. I think we're in immediate danger if we lose this green box at 24.5k. But overall, what I'm trying to display to you is this. Bitcoin is bullish, leaning bullish on the three-day chart. Not necessarily even the three-day chart, but just from a macro perspective, given this triangle formation that we're forming, it is leaning bullish. And more importantly than that, because you might disagree with me, sure, I don't really think the evidence is there, but cool, you're welcome to disagree. Even if you disagree with me, you'd be forced to agree because these lines are objective that Bitcoin will be seeing a move, a directional decision within the month of August uh, or very, very early September, which is very unlikely. Mostly within the month of August, you'd be forced to believe that Bitcoin will see a directional move, uh, whether it be up or downwards. And that compression is getting very tight now, right? The top of this range is at 31k, the bottom of the range is at 28.5k. So it's not a very big range we're in right now, 2,500. It's getting shorter uh, and smaller by the day. So the, the longer Bitcoin goes sideways here, the more compact we're getting, the more likely a big move really is. Um, and, you know, obviously there's many, many reasons for Bitcoin to be bullish here. I've just looked into a few of them. There's also monthly chart. We've seen uh, RSI cross on the monthly chart, which is very, very good. We've seen Blinker Band compression on the monthly chart. I've taken a major support zone on the monthly chart. Basically, everything you want to see has happened. Uh, so overall, you know, I'm not here to discuss whether it's bullish or bearish on a medium term. I'm here to discuss short term, but I do want you to look out for videos I've made in the past uh, discussing that. I do think we are bullish here. I do think that August will most likely end up in a directional move to the upside. And I do think that August will most likely end up with a break of 32K. Uh, you know, I, I don't you know, say that with exceeding confidence, I think it's probably 75% chance, right? Three out of four. So could be wrong, but overall, I think it's more likely. That's just what I'm looking at from the charts. Um, and that's a probability game, right? That's what trading is. It's all about probabilities. And so you've got to play those odds sometimes. But overall, I am a breakout trader uh, and I do not make major directional financial decisions based on consolidation and my opinions on consolidation. Overall, it does not affect me how much money I make or lose by having an opinion in this range. What I do is I re react when the breakdown actually occurs, when the breakdown act break up actually occurs. Unless there's exceeding evidence, that's what I generally do. I'm a breakout trader. And that's what I recommend everyone does, especially if you're not very knowledgeable on TA. But regardless of that, now we can get into short term. We've discussed 
basically where Bitcoin is. We've discussed the kind of uh, the, the overall on-chain charts for long-term holders, the, the volume charts. We've discussed the medium-term structure. What about short-term, medium-term? Because this is what, really what we're looking at here. What is the daily chart doing? Well, daily chart, just like what we did over here, okay, just like what we did between the months of around April and March and around June, we had a correction, very strong correction downwards, okay, a correction that went 20, 25% downwards. That was a big correction. People were getting scared during that correction. I was not. And the reason I wasn't is because I knew we were above this range. And I knew that when you break ranges, you generally retest them. That's exactly what we did. That whole time I was calling for a healthy retest of 24.5. That's exactly what we saw. I also knew that although we were in a correction, a corrective move, although we were seeing you know higher, lower highs and, and lower lows, although that is technically a corrective move, I knew that we we're also in a descending wedge formation, which is a bullish correction formation. It's a pattern of continuation, right? It's a healthy correction. And so obviously using TA, I, I managed to decide that you know Bitcoin was actually bullish and we broke upwards because of that. Unfortunately, we were unable to break the major 32K range, which is the red box above here. We we're unable to break that. And so we went right back into another correctional move. However, just like the last correctional move we saw being a descending wedge, this is a descending channel at this point in time, although that's slightly debated and I'll bring that up in a second but overall it is a bullish structure okay it's a bullish correction and so there's no reason to really fear what's going on with bitcoin right now yes we are seeing as i said before descending volume which just means that people aren't reacting right now it's not necessarily a good or bad thing if you wanted to say that the descending volume we're seeing was a bad thing, you would also be forced to realize that it was also a good thing in short term, because as you guys know, descending volume means that whatever the trend is we're seeing, it is weakening. So right now, what are we seeing? We're seeing a downwards trend. Okay, so if you're if you're the kind of person kind of person who's saying, oh, the descending volume is really bad for Bitcoin, it's bearish, you're actually kind of wrong and you're kind of hypocritical in a weird way because what we're actually seeing now for the last month or so is a descending a, a downwards trend. And at the same time as we've seen this downwards trend, we're also seeing descending volume, which means inherently that the downwards trend we're seeing is weakening, which means the move should be upwards. So I don't think the volume is relevant right now, but even if I did think it was relevant, I would say that it's probably more bullish, okay? It's more bullish than bearish. So I think that's a weak bearish argument if you're using it as the bearish argument. Um, and, you know, even with that, I think all the volume really indicates right now is that Bitcoin is compressing. And we know that. We know from Bollinger Bands, okay, that we're seeing compression. In fact, the Bollinger Bands on the daily chart are the most compressed, the tightest they have been for probably like three years, <laughs> not three years, sorry, that was an overstatement, since here in January, I can actually see a point in January where it was just as compressed. But the point is, right, look how tight these are. Look what we saw in January. That is the point in which we had the closest, most comparable compression that we've seen to what we're seeing now. And we saw an absolute pump in January. Okay, so the point is, Bollinger Bands are at a breaking point. Bitcoin will be moving within days, probably, right? I don't see how there could be any other scenario. Will it be upside? Will it be downside? That's the question, right? And that's what we can try to answer on short term, uh, you know, but the point is Bitcoin looks very good and you, we do know as well that we have, uh, and this is something you might not actually know, right? I shouldn't say it like that. We have 50 EMA, which has been absolutely fundamental to the daily chart for Bitcoin for years, okay? You could just look at the chart for a second and just say, yeah, there's fake out, sure. But overall, look at the rejections we see on daily candles. Look at the supports we see on daily candles. Look at these tests here, man. This this line, this 50 EMA is so important for Bitcoin. I'm circling so many occasions here. It's so important for Bitcoin. It marks the major bottoms. It marks the tops of short-term moves. You know, look at this. This is amazing. And we've come through it. We've chopped around it. And right now, what are we doing, guys? What are we doing with it right now? We are holding it very closely for major support. Okay, we are on support from the 50 EMA, one of the most important uh, moving averages on the Bitcoin daily chart. We're on support for it. Bitcoin has major support right here, right on top of where we are right now. Gorgian channel, same story. Central line of the Gorgian channel is right on top of that 50 EMA, giving it layered support, okay? The fact of the matter is, Bitcoin is very, very supported right now. Now, I think the only thing that's slightly, not really concerning, but slightly concerning for short term is the RSI. I think there definitely is a possibility we drop down and retest this RSI support a bit lower, but that could happen within this daily candle, and that could happen while holding the support we just mentioned, so that's not really threatening. The only thing is, I also think we could probably drop down below this line and actually retest the lower one, which would, would, would lead to a more extensive correction, perhaps down to 28.6k once again, which by the way, we called perfectly for a retest to 28.6k during this period here. Retested it twice, went upwards. Great stuff by our channel there, but I think there is probably a small chance on the table that Bitcoin does break down one more time for a retest at that level, potentially even a little bit lower, in which it holds this RSI support and then goes upwards from there. That's certainly a possibility, but overall, I've said it before, I'll say it again, 
I, I, I think uh, it's very supported right now. And I'll actually conclude this video with saying this, but not yet. I do need to look into other charts. I think it's very, very uh, supported the scenario that Bitcoin either goes up from here or goes down a little bit more and then goes up from there. I think that's very much the most likely scenario. Hourly chart, same story. Yes, and, and, and I wanted to discuss this as well. Yeah, by the way, hourly chart, yeah, we've got a descending wedge as well, which supports the short-term scenario being bullish. Again, I think there is a chance we go down from here and then go upwards from there. Look, it's possible. You know, it's possible. I'm not going to deny the possibility. It's certainly possible. Uh, for hourly chart RSI, let's delete everything so we can look at it. Sorry, hourly chart RSI is... You know, showing major support, it's not necessarily clear definitive support, but it's something like that. And again, that does suggest that perhaps we go down one more time, okay, go down 28.6, something like that, and then bounce from there. There definitely is a scenario in which we go downwards for one more swoop of lows, potentially even a little bit lower on a liquidation wick to something like a retest of this yellow line. That is certainly a scenario. So something like 28K flat could be a scenario, but I see it actually quite a, as quite unlikely right now that Bitcoin goes anywhere anywhere really that much further than 28. I think going that much further down than 28 would be very, very bad. I think the Bitcoin is largely bottomed out. Perhaps, you know, as I said, one more swing of 28, maybe we'll see. Uh, and But overall, one more thing I want to discuss that's from this short-term chart that shows us is, you know, you, you, we've seen a, we've seen a fake out of this uh, descending channel formation, sure. Uh, and, you know, overall, the daily chart, it still remains. And the reason why it still remains is because we actually saw the candle close validate the channel, even though the wick didn't, even though the wick faked out the candle close validated the channel. But if you wanted to be really, uh, you know, uh, I guess you could say critical about the Bitcoin chart right now, you could even say that Bitcoin's in a descending wedge. I don't think there's really that much confirmation to confirm it, but you could even say that this is what Bitcoin's doing. And perhaps it is, perhaps that is what Bitcoin's doing. And we'll have to look into that in the future. You know, if we see a, a break, uh, supposed breakout of this channel, for example, and nothing happens, then of course it might be in the wedge. But overall, Bitcoin is in one of these two structures. Either way, both of the structures are very bullish structures. So we'll actually go ahead and draw a dashed yellow line there, a speculative channel. And if we're doing that, it's exactly what, the same as what we saw over here, in which case it's still bullish. So regardless of what we're actually doing on medium term, in terms of the actual overall structure of this move, it still looks very good. Um, one more thing I wanted to look at is Ethereum. Again, Ethereum validates the fact that Bitcoin could, could go downwards a little bit lower. Reason being is because we saw a resistance support flip from this dotted yellow line, and we're a little bit far away still from this yellow line support that Ethereum has. And Ethereum, uh, you might not know this, but Ethereum actually did mark the bottom for Bitcoin uh, over here in June, okay? We went downwards on Bitcoin, uh, and we didn't quite retest uh, the the bottom of the, the wedge, actually. What, we actually. what we actually saw, right, was this was the wedge over here. Bitcoin actually dipped below the wedge and we almost went for a retest of this yellow uptrending line on Bitcoin, which validates the yellow uptrending line on Ethereum. On Ethereum though, we actually retested the line. On, Ethereum, on Bitcoin, we didn't quite, which leads us to believe that maybe that maybe Ethereum kind of foreshadowed the Bitcoin bounce a little bit earlier. And in that case, Ethereum, and if that was the case, then Ethereum is quite important for Bitcoin right now. And we can take Ethereum being a little bit above support as a reason perhaps for for Ethereum and Bitcoin to go down was one more time for a retest. You know, it, you know, it's it's hard to say. And, and that's why I'm going to conclude with what I'm about to say right now rather than with, oh, Bitcoin's so bullish, it's going up from here. No, I don't think there's any definitive reason to believe that Bitcoin will go upwards from right here exactly. Uh, but I also don't think there's any reason to believe that Bitcoin will go downwards extensively. My opinion on Bitcoin right now is this. Bitcoin can go downwards probably to 28K maximum. I don't see Bitcoin going below 28K. That's my opinion. I don't see Bitcoin going below 28K from what I've seen on short-term, medium-term right now. If it does, that's bad and we can reconsider TA. But right now, I think that Bitcoin has substantial TA evidence to suggest that the overall large downside move is over. If we go down and retest for lows, perhaps we see a liquidation week a little bit lower. But overall, I don't think Bitcoin is going below 28K. I think that Bitcoin actually looks dramatically bullish. And I think that this move we're going to be seeing in August will be an upside move. And I think that we're probably, you know, uh, not very far away from it at all. Obviously, it's going to be within August. But I think we're a matter of days away from the trigger. I genuinely do think that, you know, perhaps a week at most. I, I think that it's going to be happening sooner rather than later, you know, before the end of August, before late August, it will be happening. You know, perhaps within the next week, we'll be seeing a trigger about move and a break above this, this level here. But look, it's hard to say exactly when it's going to be. The fact of the matter is, is I don't think Bitcoin has much downside movement to go. If at all, there is a definitely a chance that Bitcoin's actually bottomed out already on the short term. Uh, so yeah, looking good is overall the conclusion I can make from this video. Bitcoin is looking good.
Guys, go ahead and check out the Crypto Academy 10 unit Become a Trader course. It will teach you how to trade. It will teach you how to analyze charts, everything you need to know about TA or 95% of the things you need to know about TA in this course, including uh, more like concepts, right? Fundamental concepts, investor strategies, what is Bitcoin, etc. All the basic stuff in unit one, going through to uh, you know market psychology and then intense TA uh, courses between unit two and eight. And then unit 10 is advanced risk management, how to find trades, which actually enables you to you know become an expert on that kind of field so this is the course you want if you want to learn how to trade uh the website is below in the description you can find the link to the website read up all about it and finally we've got the vip group we trade altcoins on vip group three to five times a week uh we've been very profitable with a 79.12 percent win rate which is four out of every five trades reaching profit absolutely superb stuff check out the vip group information guys thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you in the next one cheers